Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It's nine o'clock, which means it's time for a talk magic. And I am super excited to have uh, this next person here that I'm interviewing today. Now, uh, this is a creator of magic, a performer, an innovator, somebody who performs at a really high level, council member of the magic circle. But on top of all of that, is also built a huge career for himself as an actor. He's been there, done that, bought the T-shirt, and I'm so excited to have him on the channel. He's also one of the nicest people I've ever met in Magic. I am, of course, talking about Simon Lipkin. How are you doing, Simon? I'm very good. The amount of time, let me tell you this. I, um, uh, when I go down to the gym and I run, your this channel is what I this channel is what I watch when I'm on a treadmill. Uh, or on a cross trainer or whatever and I think okay I know this video is 34 minutes long so that's how long I'm running for or <laughs> this video so let me tell you this I've never watched one of these interviews on the treadmill because I cannot run for an hour and 40 minutes so <laughs> so, so it's always the review shows the five by the five the shorts that if I'm feeling lazy I'm running to a short that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm keeping it quick. But yeah, I'm so excited to talk to you, to talk magic, talk all the things. I'm so excited because there's so much that you've done. And although we've known each other for a little while now, I don't even know half of the stuff that you've got up to. So this is going to be as exciting for me as it is for everybody else that's listening to the interview. Um, <laughs> And, and there's so much that we can talk about. I know that you've got some really exciting stuff coming out later, uh, coming on, up later this year that maybe we can touch on. Yeah. But for people that don't know who you are, and there might be some people out there that might not have heard of you, and that's going to change very, very soon. But let's start at the very beginning, because like I alluded to earlier on, you've got a really strong acting career. You've also got a, a career as a magician that's exceptional. You've had these two things that have been going on in your life. Has that always been the case? So I suppose my question is, how did you get into magic? What's your origin story? And were you also interested in acting from a young age as well as magic? Where did it all come from? How did it all start? So ever since I was little, I have loved performing in, in a capacity. So um, my uh, parents are obsessed with theatre and comedy. And but was, my mum used to work in television at Thames Television. Um, and had a career where she would spend her days walking around with Kenny Everett and Morecambe and Wise and, and people like that. Uh, when the Sex Pistols very famously swore on television, that was my mum's fault. She put the question into his, into his ear. She said it was a long night at work. Um, and my dad's obsessed with comedy and Monty Python, all of these things. So I was brought up going to the theatre and um, watching comedy. And I remember just, I loved variety. And always within that would come magic. And the idea of how things worked and, 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 and how to structure a joke, even at a young age, I'd be like, why is that funny? Like, what's the structure of that? What's the setup, the feed and the punchline? And then I must have, I, my, my granddad, classic clanger, the old granddad, um, mm -hmm. he had gimmicks around the house. And I'm not talking just like a long and short, he had like proper gimmicks. I remember he had like flap cards, and things in the house yeah and this is so this is i'm 36 um so i'm 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 this is at least 30 odd years ago that i've got memory of this and he had little flaps to hide second cards in and stuff and so i would play with these and i was as fascinated with those and then got bought a magic kit and i had um an old paul daniel set and i think you remember the magic circle like I think it must have been in the 80s, so you know, brought out a magic circle magic set. I remember and that, yeah. It was a green box, I think it was probably with Mark, I don't know. But like, I had that and I just loved it. I loved knowing how things worked in order to entertain people. So it didn't just stop at magic, it was, I learned, I taught myself to play the piano, I taught myself to play the guitar and the drums and I learned puppetry and I was just a, an annoying prick of a kid like an absolute prick, um, but I loved it. I loved it and magic sort of just got my heart very, very early. And I loved the fact that you could, I've always been obsessed even now with the fact that you can make someone feel like a kid. And it's, yeah. it's why I think magic works and it's why I have categories when I gig of, um, I come home and I, I say to the missus, I say, Oh, there was there was category A's and B's and a few C's of people, how people respond to magic, but they all dialed back to it's because you regress them and they're either annoyed about it 
or fascinated by it or love it kind of and and they have this different response to it um and so I just I loved it I loved it I got in my secondary school to get in I had to do an interview um because I am a overprivileged white male so uh I went to a a, a, a Ponzi school um and I had to do an interview where I talked about who I am as a person because I knew that at 11 um and uh I, 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 I did, I did mentalism. I did, I, did, I, did, I went. I, this is what I do. Everyone else went with a molecular breakdown of an atom or or an oboe solo, and I and I went in with a little dice inside a film canister and said, "Go on, pick a number." Like so, <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. It's why it makes me so happy watching you and Ryland because because I can see that kid he loves magic, and you've talked about it, and he's got other interests, and there's other things that he loves. But this is something that properly brings him joy. Yeah. And it will be with him. You can see like it has with you, regardless. We all have our ups and downs with loving things or not, but it will bring him joy for the rest of his life. Yeah. There will always be a constant of something that makes him happy because you can look back and go, well, I felt that at nine, 10 years old and it's, I still feel like it now. So it's such an exciting thing to see. Um, so I did that and I would perform magic and I... Um, I went to a place called the Sylvia Young Theatre School, which is like a performing arts school for pretentious children. And uh, I would get on the train from Gants Hill in Essex to Marylebone every day. Um, and I change and I go past Charing Cross. So on the way home, and I was working as well, I do voiceovers and adverts and things as a, as a kid actor. Oh, wow. On the way home, I'd always stop off at Davenport's. I'd get off at Charing Cross, I'd go down into the underpass, I'd say, you show me a trick and I buy something. And, and so I started to build up all of this magic from quite a young age. And then I sort of grew up and my career took over as an actor and I started that very young. Um, and magic, I always loved magic, but it very much was my little hobby. And then I did a play with uh, Andy Nyman and we were sat next to each other and we had, we connected on lots of levels. We're both we're both Jewish men that love comedy and magic. So we sort of, we, we, we were together. In all honesty, it was the food. We connected over food, but, but <laughs> and then the other stuff came. Um, but uh, he then sort of said, well, show me a trick. And I didn't know, I didn't know who he was, right? So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't fear him like everyone else does. So I, I just thought, this is a nice guy. I'm working with him. And then I found out who he was and I thought, oh shit, I've shown him a slip force. Like, what have I done? What are you, an idiot? Um, uh, <laughs> and so he got me back into it. He introduced me to the circle. He took me to the circle for the first time. He, uh, I met Preston, uh, his son, who is now my best friend. And, uh, and so that's when I fell back in love with magic. And then over the last, over the last year, I properly started gigging, uh, which was thanks to you. And really? I, I, yeah, I, I, I briefly mentioned this to you when we, we were doing something at the circle a couple of months back that I didn't really have the guts to do it. And I've got a lot of friends who are brilliant magicians and brilliant giggers and, and excellent. And I always just thought, no, I don't know what I'm doing. I can't do it. And since you started this channel, it, it genuinely has given me, I would watch it. I would get the advice that I needed. You did things on set lists on how to work stuff. On, uh, I, I had a, a fully blown, um, I have a career, but we hit a pandemic that for our entire industry, and especially mine as an actor, I couldn't be in a Western show, I couldn't film a television show, I couldn't make movies, I couldn't do anything. And I had zero help from any government help, I didn't get furloughed, I, didn't, I was literally on my own with my savings, and two and a half years is a long time. So a chunk into it, I thought, no, come on, things started to start again. And I thought, be brave, you can do this. And it was only through having the confidence, learning things to even just learning where to look for tricks and things, learning what might work, what, what might not work, seeing it. It was, it, a, a lot of it is down to getting the confidence from watching this channel. Wow. Yeah, so it's amazing, it's amazing. So like, it, it's, 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 it's brilliant. It's even just, even just the review shows going, Okay, learning what magic to buy and not to buy. Even if I completely disagree with a review, I get to watch it all and go, okay, well, I like the vibe of that. That doesn't fit with my style, this, you know. So it was a real help in terms of, in terms of gigging. 
I thought it was it was a real help and a real benefit. Um, but yeah, before that, I I got into uh, creating. I set myself a challenge during lockdown. I was on my own in a flat um, in central London, and I thought, you know what, I'm gonna. I've never made a gimmick before. I'm gonna try and build one. And so I built one one day, and I thought I won't see this through unless I give myself a challenge. So I thought. I'm not, I don't really use social media all that much, but I thought I'm gonna have to, I have to post this on Instagram um, and put it up. That's the only way that I'll actually commit to this for the day. I thought that was fun. I thought, well, I've got no plans tomorrow, so I'll do it again. And I challenged myself that I had to create and invent 50 new tricks and I had to post them on Instagram every single day. Wow, that's, thought, that's tricky for anyone. Right. And it wasn't, it wasn't, nothing was off the shelf. I think maybe there were a couple where I was really stumped and I changed the presentation, but I used a, I used an existing gimmick. I built everything. Um, there's, I'm surrounded by, a, a, by a bunch of it and I loved it. It kept me sane, but it also gave me this hunger and appetite for creating. Um, and I think you've talked about this and I know any of my friends that create talk about it. It's a muscle, right? If you, yeah. if you don't exercise it, you, 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 you find it difficult. So I think unknowingly, I basically went hard on like the mind gym for 50 days straight creating. And I read old books and figured out that, oh my God, these methods in these old, old books. Like I picked up the old Dunninger book which is basically unreadable in terms of the trick that he's trying to perform. But you look at a picture and see a bit of a method and just go, oh my, oh my goodness, that's an incredible method. And if I, if I take that and mix it with that and put it in this, then all of a sudden it's a, it's a brilliant new trick. That's great. I, lo yeah. I loved it. Am I waffling too much? I'm probably talking too much. No, no, I'm fine. I'm literally on the edge of my seat here. This is fascinating. So. Fascinating. So yeah, so that was 50 tricks and then it got to the end of, and I just thought I, my, I'm, I'm brain dead, I've got to stop. And my house is full of plastic cups and tape and thing. I can't move anywhere. Like I, 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 have to, I have to stop, I have to stop. Um, so that, but then what that turned itself into was wanting to create tricks. And then what that joint with is what we're getting round to is I started gigging and then I thought, I don't really like doing double cross and omni deck. Uh, not because they're bad tricks, they're phenomenal tricks. But I, I have this other job, so I don't need to do this because I have to make sure I get that next booking. I want to do this because the pocket money is amazing and lovely, but also I want to love it. So what do I want to gig? What do I feel like I want to do? And it, does that thing exist? It doesn't. Okay, well, let me make it. Mm. How do I make this thing? What do I... So any... I've got five things that are, we, am I allowed to say this? I don't know, is that, am I yeah, going? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll give people the frame. Uh, you're flying over later on this year to uh, Penguin Magic. Yeah. And you're gonna be uh, uh, producing a bunch of your original material yes. with Penguin Magic, right? Yes. Five, yeah. five, five items altogether. Five in total, I don't, there's one that I don't think will be ready in time to work then, but but we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that one afterwards. But, but yeah, and, and that's, it, it's incredible to me. It's incredible. And, and these tricks, by the way, that we're talking about, I know we can't really give too much away about them just yet, but they are, I've seen all of them. They are all incredible. And, and frankly, it flies against the advice that I give a lot of people on this channel, because normally I say with creativity, it takes years to kind of get to a point where you've got something that's a really good idea that will hit commercially. You've flown in the face of that, Simon. Genuinely, you have. The stuff, considering you're, you're saying to me, hey, I, I decided in lockdown that I was going to start creating magic. A year later, well, you know, Penguin Magic are flying me to Columbus yeah. to go and produce all of these original routines. And by the way, they're amazing. That's kind of unheard of there. It's really, it's really kind. And I, and I am not... Um... I'm not uh, blind to the fact of it's unorthodox and it's and it and it's not necessarily the norm. Um, the only thing that I can think of is that because of my day job as an actor, the understanding of and it's the thing that I'm passionate about. The understanding of 
the arc of something or how to tell the story like that thing I apply that to my magic and I always try and apply that to my magic and I also come from the Andy Nyman school of uh the simplest most effective method that I know will work without it I'm going to do all of the hard work before so that when it comes to performance I don't really have to worry about anything this thing will work mm -hmm. um and so I really get behind that um that sort of that idea that the hard work and the smart thinking should be done before and in the method and actually I'm not I can't I cannot I'd like you you've shown me stuff with coins the other I couldn't do it I mean I'm sure if I put my head down and did it I would get better at it I can't do it I can't do diagonal palm shifts and things and and coins I can't do it so I want the stuff I want to put all of the hard work into making the thing idiot proof for me so that when I get there, it's about me and that person. Now I know that that doesn't appeal to everyone and rightly so, because we're all individuals. And like I said, I'll make the stuff that I love to do. So if you love to challenge yourself with incredible card magic or coin magic or whatever that may be, good, great. As long as the end result is whoever you're showing it to has the same, has that experience that you want them to, amazing. But it's all about, yeah, it's just all about all about doing the hard work before. So you're right, I, I've, I've spent maybe a year working on, on, on these things. Um, but they're all quite, and I probably shouldn't say this, but they're all quite simple methods or complex methods that I've done all the hard work on that then, that then will just sit as an easy method. So you, there isn't too much to do really other than go, well, this is the idea and here's how it would work. And this is the thing, this is how it would make someone feel. And then that is where the value is. I really think that as magicians, we, we get really carried away with, oh, it needs to be a groundbreaking method for it to be a good trick. And the, a lot of the time, the minute that people find out, they've seen people do it, good friends, and it's not, it's human nature, so I understand. But the minute that they find out the method is something simple or something that they maybe know, they, they push the trick to one side. And they think, oh, no, it's just silly. I could make that, couldn't I? Well, you, A, you didn't. And B, it isn't silly. It's, it, it, we mustn't put the method, you can, we could do the trick in 10 different ways probably, from easy to hard. But it's the end result of the thing that counts. Yeah. So, so making something simple for yourself, I don't think is a bad thing. I don't think it's a, it's a negative thing. I think we put too much value on crazy methods. Don't get me wrong. I love toys. We all love toys. I love seeing a gimmick that is clever and smart and does amazing things. But at the same time, I much prefer an effect where I know that it's going to be hugely powerful, however I choose to present it. But, but on the flip side of that as well, Simon, one thing that I've, I've realised from meeting you is you, I don't know how well you know Lloyd Barnes, my friend Lloyd Barnes. He, I've met him a couple of times. Yeah, but... so he's got an incredible mind for creating magic. And it feel when I'm with you, I, I see that same kind of process going on in your head. And I'll give people an example. I've got a trick coming out through Murphy's at some point, and I showed it you. And uh, I was joking with Mitch, who was videoing it, saying this is going to be the shortest product I've ever done. It's only going to be a half an hour tutorial. And then I made the mistake of showing it you. <laughs> and then you literally the day before the shoot and yeah. then on the morning of the shoot I wake up to the longest Facebook message I've ever had in my life <laughs> with like ideas and notes and different ways of using this that I'd never even thought of and 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 the tutorial ended up being about two and a half hours <laughs> half an hour of my thing and two hours of all of Simon I felt like turning around to Murphy's and saying really you should just give this one to Simon uh, it's, it's his trick but like you looked at something and you were like, okay, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this, just immediately. And it's amazing how your mind works in that respect, because to be clear, not many people can do that. Well, that's really kind. Um, I, 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 I think I've been really lucky to be surrounded by some really brilliant people. So I maybe learned good habits. Um, I've been pushed in the right direction by, you know, it, it, I, when I joined the magic community, um, 
I walked in and constantly sat down with Andy and Preston and Mark Kirstein and Harry DeCruz and um, Qualter Noel and, and these, these people who have these brains. Like the one that always, Mark Kirstein, I know is the, everyone is the app guy, but just his magical brain. Oh, yeah. his, his, his under, the way that he can tweak something and give you notes on something is incredible. Same with Harry, same with, and so I think maybe I was just pushed into good habits, but also the one, the sort of mission, if I was on any sort of mission statement, it, it's about acting in magic and performance. Um, and that doesn't necessarily be being able to make a bunch of people laugh. It's, it really is thinking about the arc of something. And, and what happens and where that story, and I don't mean you have to tell them a literal story. I just mean, we all have a narrative going on whilst we're experiencing something. And where does that narrative end? So um, I was probably, I, I was just, I shouldn't have said that stuff to you. I was a loud mouth prick. I shouldn't, I, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have said it. I'm but, so glad you did. No, we were, we were out, we were, we were, I saw it and I just went, oh, that would be fun. And before I knew it, then Lloyd said, no, 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 we'll tell Craig. And then we went and we we're in this thing. And actually it was really fun work at workshop and all of that stuff. And, and it, the thing is, you got no good idea unless you're working off of a good grounding. So if the trip wasn't solid in the first place and didn't have all of those bits in there, I'm just, put, I'm just putting icing sugar on it. Do you know what I'm like? It, it's, not, it's not the hard work. You did the hard work. The hard work it was done by you. This is what I'm saying. The method, the hard work was all done. And then what I would do is I'd go, okay, well, this is a lovely thing, but what about, what about just sprinkling this little something on it and, mm -hmm. and just moulding it a little bit is the thing that I love doing, um, which, again, just comes from that. So I'm so passionate about... I lectured at Blackpool earlier this year, and it was all about improv and being responsive and being able to to push yourself creatively uh in directions that you didn't think were there before so that you don't just buy a trick take it out of the packet watch how someone else performs it and go well that's how i'm going to do it because it's not yours you have no ownership over that thing no. you have no ownership I, I i opened your key master the other day and and started learning it and it's 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 just a brilliant routine it's a brilliant routine but you do it the way you do it. And absolutely, if anyone goes out and does it the way you do it, they're going to kill with it, right? But in essence, you open that packet and you've got four little keys staring at you. You've got some keys staring at you. Um, you're sorry. No, no, you didn't say that. They're, yeah, I mean, the, the trailer shows the four keys. They're okay, very, right. very honest about what they get. So you've, got, you've got some keys staring at you and a brilliant trip. But the first thing that I do is go, Okay, well, what do I what do I want to do with these keys? Just four keys. It's four keys, and someone else is very hard work. So, how do I sprinkle the icing sugar on it for me? Yeah, and Which you know what? That's so important, and it's something that I lecture about when I lecture about taking tricks. Every you know, magicians, I, I've I've seen it over and over again. They 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 buy tricks because they're looking for that trick that's going to make them the next big star. And mm -hmm. I'm going to be the next big magic star if I get the right trick. Mm -hmm. it's never about that trick it's always about taking the tricks that you've bought and injecting your own personality onto it and making it something you new and original and different that nobody else is doing for sure they'll remember you not the trick they that it's it's that old thing of <clears throat> when people say you know oh, card tricks all look the same well yeah but so does all mentalism so does it so they, they all do they all they all yeah how many times we've all gone to gigs and and, and they go do the one with, and it's a completely different trick, but they, they, they just do the one with the ring. I said, okay, that could be anything. But like, it, they, if, they, if you make them remember you, you're the, you're the magical bit without sounding too sort of wanky. You're the, you're the special thing. You're the, I'm sure everyone's done a presentation of, you've signed the card, that makes it special, just like you, the special thing is gonna happen. Right, well, that's true. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a thing because it's true, but you, it, that works on you as well. So you could do the most simple trick in the world, but if you make the experience special with them, if you give them something that you're connected with, that you share together, they will have a memory. People don't remember the 70 pound lobster that they ate on the seafront in Barbados or whatever it will be. They remember being with the person in Barbados. 
they remember how they shared that experience that the the big ticket item is sort of by the by mm. so use the one that works for you yeah that's really good advice I, I think it's so important there's so much of this stuff know who you are you know i i, I um i, I it, it sorry i'm thinking about how to phrase it i always say you should know your superpower right so you should know um and again this is from advice of other people if you turn up and you do i'm not saying this is bad again it, everyone's an individual but if you turn up and you do a card trick and then you do some mind reading and then you do another thing that's brilliant and entertaining and that works there's certain situations where that's the way to go but you're you're a person that does tricks whereas if you know your superpower so do i am i a card sharp am i a, a mind reader am i a, 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 a telekinesis whatever and again it works more for stage but you can work it in a in a in an environment but then it's you you are that person your skill is that now all of a sudden that's more about you the guy who not the trick that yeah yeah and so oh did you, the guy who could who could darren who could influence your thing through nlp and all of that sort of stuff it's amazing he's not no one ever names the trick maybe the russian roulette or the thing it's about him it's about his skill so what's your skill okay start there what's your skill and then once you know what your skill is what defines that skill? So if you're a mind reader that, and you can only see, okay, I'm a mind reader, but can only see 10 minutes into the future and I can only do it by eating a Smartie. It's weird, but it's a thing, right? It's a mental premise, but you've set the parameters. That's the playground and we'll get on board with it. So now all of a sudden, when I wanna know what that card is that you've picked or that name is that you've written down, I eat the Smartie and I go back and I come back and I say, you, you, you really need to get to the doctor. Like, or, and, and then, um, but then now there's a premise for me reading your mind. It's not a puzzle anymore. It's not about the trick anymore. It's about me and you experiencing this either very serious mind reading thing or this silly mind reading thing or this brilliant card trick or coin trick or whatever that may be. But essentially know your character, know who you are. You are the product, not the tricks. Yeah. And by presenting that thing, you're so much more memorable. You're so much more connectable with words. You're like, you, you offer so much more and it's so much easier. It's so much easier to just talk and, 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 and talk to people and really connect with them if you don't feel like you're performing at them. Mm. Yeah, that is incredible advice. This is... This is honestly, it's already become my favorite interview. I'm telling you right now, this is my favorite <laughs> interview ever, ever, ever. So uh, your, your creative process is brilliant, uh, but obviously you, you're, you're performing magic now, but you've been, you know, acting, and we'll talk more about the acting in a minute. Right. But on top of all of that, I did allude to it earlier on, you're on the Council of the Magic Circle. Yeah. Uh, and which, which is uh, pushing for big change at the moment, which is great. But as well as that, you're actually on the examinations board for the Magic Circle as well. Yes. So when people come in on audition, you go yes or no. Yeah. So, so you see a lot of acts coming in. Do you have any advice for people that are not necessarily auditioning for the Magic Circle? Yeah. But it could be. But really just people who want to improve their performance. Because a lot of the time... You see people that we were talking about it uh, off camera earlier on. You see people come in the audition and they're expecting to go through and they don't because of, you know, certain issues that there might be with their performance. Yeah. As someone who's seen so many examinations now, is there any advice you can give on how to be, you know, like a better performer based on your experience? Oh, for sure. There are, there are certain things. Firstly, auditioning is petrifying. It's if auditioning for anything. I, I my literally spent my life auditioning for jobs. That is that, like it is in and it's never not scary it's never it's never fun but there are things that you can do um and uh again it it, it carries on from what we were sort of just talking about a do what you love if you see it as a test then it's petrifying and you are going to try and do stuff that is not good if you present who you are and what you love 
the worst thing that happens is you walk out of that room, regardless of the result, and go, well, I did myself proud. And so all of a sudden, a little bit, you can hold your head up, right? Because if you try and give them what you think they want to see, you're already so many steps away from where you should be. Whereas if you go, this is what I want to show you. This is what I love. This is what I do. And I couldn't love it more. If you like it, oh, thank you so much. If you don't, okay, I do. So that mindset means that you can, you can walk in before you've even started proud and less nervous because you're connected to the stuff. Um, and then I think the one thing that you see, especially with the magic circles or auditions is people over pushing themselves. They think that they need to show this incredible skill. It's a club for amateurs and magicians. I'm, I, I would call myself very much an amateur who, who sometimes tips over into the professional, but you don't need to do anything. I fooled the room with a five pound self-working packet trick from International Magic for my audition. It didn't look like it, they didn't know it. I dressed it up, I put it in a ball gown and showed it off around the room. Like, but they didn't know that. I did a book test that I bought the day before at the session. I read it that night at the session and thought, yeah, that would do. I did a book test that I bought the day before, uh, a five pound packet trick from International Magic and I did. I knew I needed to show something, so I did. I did a version of a wild card, um, but again, with very little wild card presentation. So I did one piece of technique in there in in twelve minutes, and I think I was maybe a point off of AIMC. Wow. So uh, for for my first one, I was I was, I was just under. Um, so they don't care. If you are likable, this goes back to what we're saying. If I'm sitting there and the person is likable, as long as they vaguely do, I just need to do a double lift or do something or like that you understand the technique of magic, then great. Because a big thing to remember is you don't have to turn up perfect. You're joining the club to get better, to advance. I want members who are going to go, great, now I get to start learning. Mm. So if you turn up with that, attitude and just are warm and yourself and present how you want to present then that room is going to invest in you and we're going to enjoy it so much more than if you desperately try and do your ace assembly that you you've been working on for four weeks and you're and you're nervous about it and and and, and you're going to fumble and the the coin's going to drop and the things just do, do make it easy for yourself get from a to b in the simplest way possible so, because you're going to be nervous so make it good for yourself put the technique in the middle don't put it at the beginning when 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 you when you when your hands are going and all of that sort of stuff start with something that i would say maybe doesn't look so self-working but dress it up always dress it up as something else so they don't know um and then put the technique in the middle and finish on something that you love finish something that makes you happy that's great that's amazing Again, yeah. really good advice. Yeah. <laughs> be happy. All of the advice that I will ever give sits in be yourself and do what makes you happy. Like when I walk into a room to audition for an acting job, I don't, and I don't mean this, with this will probably sound more arrogant than I mean it to, but I don't mean it in that way. I don't care what they want from the character. I'm going to play the character how I want to play it because I know that if I get the job, this is how it's going to happen. I'm going to do it like this because it's the way I connect with it. If they get on board with it, amazing, we're gonna have a great time and we're all gonna connect. If they don't like it, I would be terrible at the job because if, if I, that's all I can do is be me. So if you go into a room trying to give them what you think they want to see, it's never gonna be good. Also, you're never gonna stand out because you're trying to conform. You're trying to be something that you think someone else wants you to be rather than just unashamedly being yourself. And if people yeah. love you or don't love you, that's great because that means those connections that you make are going to be so much stronger than anything you could have ever imagined when you try and pretend to be something you're not. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I want to change tact a little bit and talk about your career as an actor. It's your interview. <laughs> yeah, well, I want, to, I want to flip things around because for people that haven't heard of you, um, you know, there's obviously various different levels of being an actor, you know, from Hollywood megastar Tom Cruise to yeah. 
Lower. Yeah, lower, 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 lower. lower. <laughs> so, I mean, you, you've had a really good career. I mean, so to give you a frame of reference, I don't think I've ever told you this. Yeah. Uh, myself and Ryland reviewed your uh, yours and Preston's Rubik's Cube trick, which yeah. is a great trick, by the way. And Ryland carries it around with him everywhere. Oh, yeah, he carries that around with him everywhere. In fact, he went and did a close up job about a week ago, and his mom took him and he had to turn around halfway there because he left it on the side. Like, literally, he loves that trick because it fits in with what he loves. It, yeah. what you said. He loves Rubik's Cubes, anything to do with Rubik's Cubes. So, anyway, we were watching the trailer, it's yet yeah, the tutorial when we first got it. And you and um, yeah. Preston on the you and Preston on the tutorial. And we were watching it, and he was like, Right, okay, I'm gonna learn this. I'm, I'm gonna love this. And we we're watching it together. And he just turned around to me and he went, it's Mr. Poppy's brother. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? He went, that's Mr. Poppy's brother. I'm like, what, what are you talking about? He's like, Nativity, that's Mr. Poppy's brother. I was like, no, it's not. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And we had to go down onto Sky to find it. So he went, look. <laughs> so, so, I mean, but I mean, that's a, that's a, that's a big film. You know, really yeah, big sure. film. One of Ryland's favorite films. And I think it's one of the reasons why he thinks you're so amazing. And... That's that's just one thing that you've done. So I, the reason I tell that story is because I want people to understand that when we refer to you as an actor, not that there's anything wrong with just doing Amdram or whatever. Yep. You've, you've got, you, which not at all. You've had a very successful career and continue to have a very successful career on stage and on TV and yeah. film. Yeah, um, it's incredible. It's right, it's gone all right. Um, so yeah, I've spent most of my life, I spent sort of all of my 20s really, um, I started, when did I start working professionally, like as an adult? 18. So um, I was in Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat in the West End, I think at 18, 19, I, I was in that show. Um, and then uh, went on from there, there's a there's a show called Avenue Q, which is sort of an adult comedy puppet thing. Um, and I was the original original lead in the in the West End cast of that um wow. so and then from then on I've just done I've done a lot of West End shows I've done a lot of big shows in the West End uh leading them so shows like Rock of Ages and Wind in the Willows and Spam a lot and uh all sorts of ghost story Andy Nyman's ghost story. I, was, I, I, I played Andy's role that he created for himself in ghost stories I did that in the West End um, me and, uh, do you know Rebel Wilson, the actress Rebel Wilson, uh, her and I played Nathan and Adelaide together in Guys and Dolls. Um, and alongside that, I've been very lucky and I've done a bunch of television. So I'm currently filming, I literally, as soon as we finish this interview, I'll get in the car and I head back to Bristol. I'm filming um, a series called Tracy Beaker for the BBC. So we shot the last series, first series last year of the, of the sort of comeback and we're in the middle of the second series. Um, film for Netflix earlier this year. I the, the Nativity films. So the Nativity films are very close to my heart. So um, I took over as the Mr. Poppy character in Nativity Rocks, and um, like we did the stage version. So I was on stage. I would do uh, Hammersmith Apollo. I did three years in a row uh, for four weeks. Three and a half thousand people a show, pretty much sold out. It's about ten times a week. So and, we, and improvised. It's why I love improv so much. So I would go out in front of three and a half thousand people and go, well, let's make it up. Um, uh, which they shouldn't know because they all paid a lot of money to see it, but they had a good time. So we're all all right. Uh, but yeah, so I, very lucky. And then I once um, I finished Tracy Beaker at the end of the year, I'll be at the Dominion Theatre in the West End playing um, Elf in Elf, so, which is the Wilf, I'm playing the Will Ferrell role in, 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 in Elf in the West End for, uh, over the rest of the year. So I will go to Columbus, film the magic, come back, start rehearsals, shave this beard off, which is not great because I look like a pudding and uh, stick on stick on yellow tights and green jacket and play an elf um, for, the, for the rest of the year. So, so yeah, I'm very lucky. I'm very lucky. Um, and, I, and I've just been in the right place at the right time. Um, but, all of that stuff that I said about auditioning and just, I, I really, really do practice what I preach. Everything that I've ever gone in for has been a little bit left field of what they thought they would cast. But well, it was just going yeah, I mean, Nativity, for example, you're Jewish. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's, that's the thing. It was very funny that I had zero idea the story of the Nativity. I was like, you're gonna have to talk me through, you're gonna, you're gonna have to talk me through this one because I, I, it's not my, it's a different book. 
it's a different book. <laughs> so, no, I don't know. Um, but yeah, so so that and but but also Nativity, Mr. Poppy is this innocent character. I'm six foot two, covered in tattoos, with a bit like it's probably not what they were exp- envisaging from the character. But you mm. kind of go in and go, well, this is what I offer. And they kind of go, well, okay. And, and, and so it's all about having confidence in yourself, having that belief and drive in, in what you can bring. Um, I get to do some cartoon shows. I do a cartoon show called The Amazing World of Gumball on Cartoon Network. Another one called Ricky Zoom, which is Nick Jr. Um, I've puppeteered for the Muppets. Um, so uh, yeah, so from after Avenue Q, learning how to puppeteer, I, I, I puppeteered on the on the uh, the Muppets movie with with that Ricky Gervais was in, and um, I do all of Harry Hill's TV shows. I do all the puppets on Harry Hill's TV shows and voice all of those, and so yeah, a bunch a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff. But but I tell you this genuinely, for all of that, I love it. I love it so much. I love my job, and I'm so lucky. I can't tell you how lucky I am. Magic makes me the happiest. Really? Wow. I love it. So I, love cool. it. I love it so much. I love it. The creativity, the dry, all of that stuff. But it links, it's the same thing. It's the same, it's just telling a story. It's just tell, it's just making someone feel something. On stage, I make them feel happy, glad, mad, sad, creeped out, whatever. On on when you perform magic to someone, you're just doing the same thing. I can still make them feel happy, mad, angry, inquisitive. I can do all of that same thing. That's what you should drive to, to, to make someone experience in magic. It's no different whether I'm standing opposite you and just talking or doing it in a theater of 3000 people. The job is the same, make you experience the thing that the story, the experience, the emotions that I want you to feel. So what, what if you, I suppose the question I've got for you is yeah. you, you, you've developed this great career recently as a magician but also you've got this incredible career as a, as an actor. Let me ask you a question. Okay. And this comes off an interview I did with Danny Nyman recently. And so let me ask a question. I'll explain. So the phone rings twice yeah. in one day. The first phone call is Simon. Um, we've got some great news. We want you to co-star with the rock yeah. in the latest Marvel film, massive budget. It's going to be our biggest film yet. Uh, everybody's in it. We'd like you to take a starring role alongside the rock. Yes. Get another phone call the next day or the yeah. same day saying, Simon, yeah. we love your magic. We'd like to give you a full one hour show special. You presenting your magic, primetime TV around the world. Um, and, and, and off the back of it, you get to do a six month run in Vegas as well um, with your own show. You can't do both of them because the, the, the schedule doesn't allow it. Which one do you go for? I definitely can't do that. The reason I ask you that, I'll tell you why while you think about it. When I spoke to Andy uh, Nyman recently, I know, he I know, said, I know his answer. Yeah, he said for many, many years, he struggled with his involvement in magic. He actually said to me, he said, uh, he got to a point where people would say, I love your work. And he would wait until they said, what aspect of the work that they enjoyed and if they went oh I love you in this I loved you and that I love ghost stories he'd be like oh thank you so much whilst if they said magic he'd be like oh, yes. and he's really struggled with that uh, up until recently yeah I'm, I'm just interested in I don't I don't you know it's really hard um I have less of a divide between the two but there definitely is a divide between the two because you yeah. The reason I think, and, and we've spoken about this, I think the reason Andy has fallen back in love with it a little bit is because of mine and Preston's friendship. And we sit for hours just creating and talking and bouncing ideas. And oh, he's sort of fallen back in love. Having interviewed him, I can tell you right now, that is the reason. Oh, well, then, so, so there you get like, and it's been, ama- it's been amazing. But I do love the magic. I do love it. I think I would really push for the scheduling to work for both. Uh, <laughs> I would really push. Uh, but the honest answer is deep down my date, my day job, my first and foremost is I'm an actor. So yeah. I think that would win. Um, also because who doesn't want to be a superhero? Because that, yes. you, you've picked the wrong thing. If you said like, do you want to be in a period drama? Like maybe <laughs> it would have been a tougher decision, but it's like, I'm a, I'm a massive superhero fan. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I definitely want to be in the superhero movie. Um, but I don't, I, but I think I would, I would have no problem 
like with this, um, a lot of people said, well, you change your name for the stuff you bring out as a creator of magic. And, well, and well so Preston has, didn't he? His spooky nine yeah, Preston, yeah, Preston, because of that exact thing, because of his dad and, and, and him wanting to not be able to be that. I have no issue. When I gig, I deliberately, because it happens sometimes, people go, have I seen you in a thing? My branding is West End Magician. So, mm. And I write actor and magician. Like, I, 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 I embrace the both. Um but yeah, I think I think I'd take that movie. I think I'd take the movie. But hopefully JJ Abrams would direct it, who is a massive magic fan, a uh, huge magic fan, and then we'd talk about magic and we'd show each other magic and then we'd make a magic movie. Nice. <laughs> that would be the plan. See? All comes, I love that. comes spinning rounds. All comes spinning rounds. That was amazing. But, How- how important is it, Simon, do you think, for magicians that have no acting background mm. to learn about acting? Because if they want to become success, and I know there's varying different levels of success. You know, you could be, spend your entire life working in restaurants and you're successful. If you're happy, then that's the most important thing. Yeah, yeah. Somebody who wants to maybe, you know, they want more, they want to be on, whatever it is. You know, how, how important is it to be able to understand about vocal projection and carrying yourself on stage, mm-hmm. scripting, writing, improv, whatever it may be. Is that an important skill that would help? In all honesty, I think it's vital. And I think it's hugely lacking in, in, in many, many areas slash people. Um, I think there is, there is a real value on the skill. And again, rightly so, because the skill is so important. But I think there is a huge undervalue on the skill that is the performing side. People think it's easy, and a lot of the time it's it's not. Um, let's take an example. Uh, the Magician in Trouble plot, any yeah. kind of Magician in Trouble plot, requires acting. And I've seen a lot of people perform it, and you are going to end with the same result, and they're going to make a noise, and you're going to think the trick went great because they went, Wah! when you turned over the whatever the card, and it was a different card. Um, but the minute you leave and they backtrack that, they know it's not real. They, the question is, how did he switch the card or how did that happen? Just because you think it's right, people, you feel so deeply. Um, it, it almost sounds like a bit it, from a mentalism act, but 75% of what we say to each other is nonverbal. It, we genuinely communicate through, through physicality. Um, and and it's it's so easy to people know when you're lying people know when you're doing something sneaky and you're going to say not you one would say i've never been caught on it well that's because people are polite you're showing them something it doesn't mean that they didn't it doesn't mean that they didn't feel it and it's all through acting when you approach someone don't you're going to perform at them because you are so rehearsed into performing this thing and they're going to say something to you that could mean that if you just listened, if you listen, so the, the basis of all acting, listen and respond. Listen to what someone says to you, process it and respond to the thing they said to you. Let that advance the moment. And by not listening, which is what I see most people do, they'll be doing their, they'll be doing their routine and someone will say something that you really should, should take you in a completely different direction because that would, is the natural progression but it's ignored and you go, (laughs) and then you just carry on with what you were saying. And that person now feels like they're not listening. I'll just watch your performance. Now all of a sudden it's a, it's a removed distance performance. And, and, and this is what I mean. I'm not talking about, you need to learn how to deliver a Shakespeare monologue or, you know, or whatever, but understanding the fundamentals of improv. It's why I, it's why I advocate improv so much, not because I don't believe in scripting, good scripts are vital and important. But if you don't understand improvisation, genuinely being able to listen, then you can't listen to yourself, listening and responding to yourself. When you create a magic trick, here's a problem. That's the problem that needs fixing. I listen, I respond. I need to go to a new stage. Okay, well, well, what's the, being open and being creative, yes and, what next? Allows that creative process to flow. Um, And by understanding just even the basics of acting and the basics of physicality, it's misdirection. I see people spending hours working on if I drop the hand here and turn it here, the hand goes up here for the perfect misdirection. Well, your personality is the better misdirection. 
if you say something that genuinely connects with someone, they're going to listen to you and talk to you. You could do that. You could your top change could could be this. Like if you're talking to someone, you're you're you are you are by not understanding that side of things, you are throwing away a vital tool to do your job. You you you're missing out on something huge. Um, yeah, I think it's really important that people understand it. Being on stage, knowing how to knowing how to create an atmosphere on stage. Um, I think that a lot of people, uh, I've seen a couple of performers recently who have come alive when the audience got good. Mm. For me, unacceptable. You have to get the audience good. You have to be in the driver's seat. You can't be driven by them. So when you're shown, if they're not interested, great. That's the energy you go with, but you play to that energy and work, you work them. And there are very simple tricks and skills and moves that you can do to do that. Mm. And that it, they're all quite not easy to learn because they take a lot of practice, but, but where do you stand on the stage? What are the powerful points of a stage? And that works in any room, whether you're doing parlor or stage, how does your physicality talk to them with regards to how you feel about yourself, with what you want them to feel, whether you make them feel scared, whether you make them feel uneasy, whether you make them feel welcome, whether you make them feel, you know, Nyman is the king of this. His presentations are key because the trick is usually very simple, but he has you right where he wants you. He can take a tiny packet trick and make it last 15 minutes with this story and he can make you feel unsettled or uncomfortable or challenged. And he's not scared of doing that. And it is so much more powerful is so much more powerful. So learning to act is it's it's vi it's imperative. It's you you are you are ignoring you are ignoring a technique as important as a fan or a spread or a French drop or a whatever if you if you don't focus on that as much as everything else. That's wow. Wow, really powerful advice. Again, this is, I hope people are really paying attention to what you're saying, Simon, because this is moved beyond an interview and it's just a masterclass on how to become a better performer. Really. Well, do, do something. I taught the YMC the other day, the, the Young Magicians Club, the Magic Circle, and uh, Andy very kindly let me um, teach them his uh, magician's graphology, which is his handling of Larry Becker's sneak thief, which, if you don't know, is a phenomenal trick and you should do it but it is also a completely customizable trick. So uh, I sat down with uh, the premise of Sneak Thief is you're all gonna draw something or write something or do whatever, um, mix them up. I don't wanna know who's done what. Uh, let's have a look. I think this belongs to you, this belongs to you, this belongs to you. I won't look at the last one because that would be too easy. It's blah, 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 right? So that's the vague premise of the trick, but that could be anything. So I sat down with 20 kids, teaching them about creativity and taught them this trick and then gave them five minutes to come up with their presentation of Sneak Thief, of magi Magician's Graphology. They had to come up with you know, a, the, a, a bit of the methods that worked for them and the premise. And then by the time that we were finished, 20 minutes later, I was in a room full of 20 kids. Each one of them had a completely different, unique performance and, and presentation of the same trick so that they all felt like completely different tricks. And all of a sudden they could realize Oh my God, this one little simple thing is now mine. This is my version of it. And I can perform this and I can do it and no one else in the world will do this. And I can fully connect with it because it's a thing that I love. So pushing that creativity in someone, pushing is so silly, start small, start with anything, start, simplify everything. What's your superpower? What's the most honest lie you can tell? If you're going to lie to someone about, we all, we all lie to them about what we can do. What's the most honest lie? My honest lie, I'm an actor. My job is to emulate characters and people. Therefore, I understand people on an emotional level. And so essentially, from now on, I'm in my head, we're in a scene together. And it means that I can sort of read you. I never mind read because that's a different skill. It's all about making emotional choices. Where does the scene go? Now, what does the, where does this go next? Well, I can sort of write the script for us. It's, an on, it's the most honest lie that I can tell because it's who I am. No one else can tell that, you know, there are other actors and magicians who can tell that same lie, but it's a really honest lie. Yeah. I don't have to lie much. But I can talk about that till the cows come home, as we've seen by me not coming up for breath in the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> I've not wanted you to stop, to be perfectly honest. I really haven't. 
Uh, that's, uh, so, I mean, you, you mentioned the YMC there. You know, yeah. How important would you say it is, the, the youth coming up now? Because you see it a lot at conventions, don't you? I mean, obviously, I'm biased because Ryland. But you see you see a, a lot of kids. And and I, I've seen it at conventions where kids will go up to a group of adults and saying, hey, uh, can I show you a trick? Or, hey, and they kind of get almost pushed away. Yeah. Not all the time, but I have seen it. And, yeah. you know, I, I personally think they're, they're, you know, the future. I really do. But, of course. Yeah. Of course. You've got to inspire them. We've yeah. got to inspire them. We've got, they're, 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 they're the future of it. We mustn't talk down to them. We mustn't try and teach them the ways that we think are right. We must encourage them to find their own path because things progress. People hate app magic. They don't. They love it. <laughs> they 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 absolutely love it they love but i hate these tricks that are just built for camera they don't because it's literally how the world talks to each other now yeah, yeah. so so it doesn't mean that the other stuff needs to go but why not encourage them how do we how do we encourage young people to be excited there was a young girl um uh, Maisie, Maisie, magic Maisie, uh, magic Maisie, yes magic Maisie. she came up to me we chatted she literally just wanted to say hello i said show me a trick she showed me something, and then I said, listen, I'm going to go here now, but if you come and find me tomorrow, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to teach you a bunch, I taught her a bunch of peaks. It's sort of how we chat, I said, that's a really good trick. I reckon you can add these two things on, and you'd have a 10-minute routine out of it. And she said, well, I don't know how to do those things. Great, I'm going to teach you four. So we sat down, and I taught her a bunch of billet peaks, really easy billet peaks, so she could do this whole mind-reading act thing, that the mentalism act that she wanted to do. And all of a sudden she had never looked into that stuff because she was she worked with gimmicks and things like that. And, and it was brilliant. It was so much fun. And you could see she was shitting herself, but she was also properly having the best time. Mm. And that's all it takes. 10 minutes of your time, 10 minutes of your time to teach them something that will last to stay with them forever. You can inspire someone so quickly. You can. Absolutely. And, and Magic Maisie is brilliant. You know, yeah, I'm, she's I'm very big sweet. Fan. Big fan. You know what? Actually, talking of, talking about that, you you mentioned um, you mentioned something there, which has made me think in a different direction. Cool. You mentioned earlier on about um, taking tricks and making them your own. Yes. Another thing that I find very annoying about you, um, <laughs> <laughs> of many things, um, is that you seem to have an ability of taking things that I've worked on and making them better instantly. Another example is the Orphic wallet. And, yeah. You know, nineteen fourteen asked me to. Uh, do uh, you know contribute some routines to that project which I did and I spent weeks and months coming up with what I thought were the best routines and then you just go and turn around to me and saying oh I'm doing this with the Orphic wallet and I'm like damn that's just incredible <laughs> why did I not think of that so you know you seem to have this habit of making me look stupid so I appreciate that Simon oh, well, you're welcome I like, yeah it's, uh, <laughs> um, yeah I love that thing though it's good isn't it right but, but uh, so, uh, where is it Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Got it. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a, I, I love this thing. Um, okay. Uh, well, should we, I can talk through one if you want. Hey, if you want to. I mean, this channel is just for magicians, and to be honest, I don't think any lay people would sit through a one and a half hour, two hour interview. Okay. Um, yeah. So this is okay. So, um, well, look, if you've got the Orphic wallet, this in no way, shape, or form is this going to fool you. But I think it's quite powerful and works very well uh, having worked it in. Um, and in fact, I showed this, I don't know whether he told you, I showed this to uh, Nemid. You know what? Not only has he told me, he's been raving about this forever. He's like, oh yeah, Simon showed me this routine with the Orphic wallet. I've been working it in. It's incredible. It's like one of the best tricks I've added into my act in ages. This is unbelievable. Um, if that's the one that you're going to be sharing, I think Nemid's going to kill me because he's been hoping to keep that for himself. Just him and you. Okay. Well, you can only <laughs> well look. You can only do this if you've got an Orphic wallet. Um, so I won't do it, but we can we can talk through uh, we can talk through the premise of it. Okay. So uh, I need one of these. Uh, I wanted, I love roulettes. I love any kind of roulette style routine. And I wanted a walk around. I love the phone smash. I love all of that stuff. I wanted walk around credit card smash. 
That's great. <laughs> right? Yeah, all about the person, great. all about the people. So, uh, have I got, yes, I've got some of these. Okay. So you're going to start here. You're going to have uh, one envelope that sits in the front of the Orfit wallet. Okay. And uh, you ask for their bank cards. Uh, they give you the bank cards. Um, and you say, now, the safest place for it is in the wallet. Now, this will come clear later, but do me a favor, put the bank card inside the envelope. So put it inside and you say, and that for this trick is going to live in the safety of the wallet. And that's where it goes. I've got something else that I want to show you. And it's this. And you take out these three uh, envelopes as well. Now, in these three, you give them to them, fill them. They also feel like bank cards. So if we take your bank card and add it back with these ones and start to mix them up, now you have no idea where your card is. And then from this point, pick one of them. They pick one and you go, great. And you crush it and you throw it away. And they do another one and you crush it and you throw it away. And then you're left with two. Okay, now one of these gets to go back into the safety of the wallet. Only one. Which one goes back into the safe space into where it goes, left or right. This one, okay, great. They can change their minds. You can present this however you want to present it. And so this does here. And then this move who someone came up with, don't know who it was. Uh, <laughs> and then, uh, so that's the one, that's the last one. That gets crushed. Use scissors, do what you want with it. The last thing that happens is, so this was the one that you're left with. And that is the bank card. That's just beautiful. So it's a very simple, simple, simple routine. Uh, and if you've got an orphic, you know exactly how that works. Do you want? Do, yeah. do I need to talk through it? Or is uh, well, it I mean, not? anybody who's got an orphic, I think, will understand exactly what's happening there. Uh, and the move that Simon taught, obviously, was taught on the orphic wallet tutorial in the cards wallet as well. So exactly. every they've got all the tools to be able to do that. But that's that's an example of you know taking this trick that has a whole bunch of material on it already by myself and Lewis. And, and taking a couple of the different moves and ideas and going in completely the different direction with it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a fun thing, right? You can use, you can, this is so versatile. I'm not gonna really go into it because I, I like the routine too much myself. Anyone who does any kind of double writing, one ahead, mixed with, I'll give you this. If you do any double writing, any one ahead, mixed with the cleverness of the no palm card to wallet that's taught in this, you can then turn this into an absolute powerhouse card to wallet with mentalism, with with prediction of mentalism. Wow. Yeah. Um, See where you go. It's all simple. It's all. It's, it's, none of this is hard. None of this is. All of this is. This is. This is little bits of plastic that you can get for pennies off of Amazon or eBay. You stick them in there, and then you dress that trick up. The tension that they're so scared that they're going to break their cards, and this lovely cover to use the Himba thing of. You open here to take those three out and I just turn it around and do that. And it's quite, that's quite bold. It's quite messy. It's, it's not a good move, but the cover of passing this to, to, to letting it, to letting oh, it. Yeah. It's just, and the nice thing is if you've got a few extra envelopes in your top pocket, you reset that thing immediately. You're done. You're done. I literally just keep a stack of them. It just keeps yeah. it, it resets. It's the sneaky bit that needs resetting is instantly reset. You just mm. need to then just add in, Couple of extra envelopes, and you the, 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 I have I have these with the with the card in. I just have a chunk of them. You don't want to do it loads, but I have enough to do it three, four times in a night if I'm doing a gig. And it's right. it's such a fun thing because it's all about them. The thing is no longer it's about their object. It's all about them. It, it, this is inconsequent. The prop, the method, everything is inconsequential because it's all about the choices that they're making and that, that kind of stuff. So. With love from me to you, work it in, do it. Let me know if it works for you. Let me know if you come up with a better idea. You probably will. Um, so, yeah, enjoy that. Yes, that's that's incredible. And you said something there, which is so true. Make it all about them. You Make know, it about them. The amount, the amount of the amount of times I see people performing, and it basically amounts to magic <laughs> masturbation. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's not about you. You're there to. You're, you're there for them. If you're on stage, it's for them. It's not about you being brilliant, which is, again, why I back up the fact that you're doing these crazy moves. No, we'll do this for you. Mm. Do, the, do the thing that gets you from A to B quickest that makes it best for them. That's incredible. That's incredible. You mentioned earlier on that you uh, you lectured at Blackpool this year. Yeah. Uh, 
that must have been an incredible experience, right? I was shitting myself. Well, I wanted to bring that up. Yeah. Of course. Well, first of all, talk to me about talk to me about the the experience with the lecture and then I'll talk okay. about. It. Firstly, I was shitting myself physically and literally because it was a bad morning. So, so that was that was my first. Experience. Oh my god, I'm going to lecture at Blackpool. Uh oh, um, quick, let's get through this quick. Um, so, uh, but it was incredible. Um, uh, Russ Brown contacted me, and um, I think because of the acting stuff, I'd said do you want to do the lecture that um, very few people are interested in about acting? Uh, so I said, yeah, why not? Um, so I uh, did that. And actually, it, having said all of this stuff, I was very scared about it because at that time, I still felt like an absolute fraud in the magic community because, like you say, most people work a decade to, to try and get to a point and I've, I've really come in the back door and just gone yeah I've been here the whole time I don't know what you're talking about so um I felt like a fraud so I took I took Preston up on stage with me to do it as a as a big old interview uh just so that I would feel a little bit safer and actually it worked brilliantly we talked we showed a lot of the tricks that I created for that 50 day Instagram thing and talked about the creative process and talked about a lot of improv about the stuff that we've chatted about today um and 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 there was what i loved actually about it was that there were some people who really disagreed with me and i loved that because i think it's brilliant to have opposing views but also it secretly also pointed out that one of the points that i made was a lot of you will think this doesn't apply to you and i promise you if you think that it really applies to you and there were some people who really thought it didn't apply to them which sort of proved the point which was great um so uh but it was people seemed to like it and get something from it and and i was i was very honored to even be asked so amazing That's yeah amazing. yeah some people go their entire career and don't get asked to go to blackpool to lecture so i mean the fact that you've got to do it so early on that's incredible yeah it was amazing amazing and and i want to ask you one more question uh on that and before we wrap this up which is you talked about feeling nervous before the the lecture you know that's something that I, I get questions on this channel all the time and the question that comes up more than anything else is dealing with nerves the amount of people that get into magic that that either leave magic because they think it's not for them hmm. or they never perform in front of real people hmm. of course they just get so overwhelmed with nerves Mm -hmm. shaky hands unable to even speak dry mouth whatever it may be mm -hmm. now somebody who's performed let's say in some stressful situations you were talking <laughs> about performing every night in front of three and a half thousand people and making it up you know yeah. on set on big shows big tv shows big films but as well as that like places like blackpool where you're very new into it and you're there lecturing and and, and as an authority i mean all of yeah. the you you're no stranger to put yourself in very nerve-wracking situations if there's you're probably the best person to ask how do you deal with nerves so that those people that are new into magic that are considering leaving because they just can't physically perform the stuff that they've practiced all this time you know yeah. they get frustrated and they're leaving is there any advice that you can give yeah of course um the first thing um which i was told a long time ago and it's always stuck with me it's a really silly thing just say the word excited don't say nervous. Whenever you're gonna say the word nervous, you say the word excited. Um, and it's a really silly thing, right? But that is step one. So you never say, oh my God, I'm so, because listen to the difference. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Oh my God, I'm so excited. They both work, right? Mm. It's the same feeling. The feelings are very close to each other. Nervous tummy, sort of weirdly jittery. They're the same physical response, right? So just say the word excited, step one, step one. Um, you have to, at some point, you have to jump in, you have to jump off the diving board. So when you jump off the diving board, you don't go for the 10 meter. You go for the, you just jump in from the edge into the water. So when you're going to perform magic to someone, you're just going to jump in from the edge. You are going to take the, the easiest thing you know how, and you are going to get in and get out quickly but you are just going to do it. Because I promise you, what will happen is the minute you do that, someone will respond because magic is amazing and it always is. And you will have an endorphin release. And that endorphin release is addictive. 
and you are instantly going to want to go back and do it again. So have a second thing in your pocket and go back and do it again. And then that's great. That's all you need to do. That's all you need to do. You don't have to do 10 minutes. You have to do the quickest trick you know how. And then the next day, you have to do it again. And then the next day, you have to do it again. You're only ever going to do that quick. You're never going to get, you're never going to run before you can walk. You're going to do the quickest thing that you know how. And all of a sudden, you're going to learn as much as you are going to enjoy. Oh, okay, well, that person was a prick. That person was nice. Oh, that's how I deal with that. I don't know. And all of this time, you are doing, I, d I don't even know, whatever the easiest trick is for you. Do a di do digital force bag. Do, so do, any do anything that literally you can't just do something that cannot go wrong um and you're gonna look amazing take a take a take a spin pad and just make a prediction and get them to pick something and then show them what it is like do, do, just 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 do something but by doing that you're going to train yourself to to know what it's like you might love it, you might not love it. And if you don't love it and you're still two weeks in and you don't love it, this is probably not for you. It's not failure. That's knowing who you are. That's knowing what you love. That's knowing what floats your boat. Some people are not born for it. Some people just don't have that in them. But if you do, you'll know really quick. And from that point, go up to the one meter and then the two meter and then the three meter. And it doesn't need to be a rush. You do it in your time. You are in the driving seat. You, you, you are the special thing. You control it. So take those things. Take those things that you love. Everything that we've spoken about here. Do the work before. Do the work before. Do all of the hard work before so that when you get to that position, you're not worried about the thing. And if you are worried about the thing, it's too hard for you. That doesn't make you less good than anyone else. That makes you moving at your pace. That trick that I just showed you, all you've got to do is this with your hand. It couldn't be easier with, with, with the wallet but you could entertain people till the cows come home with that thing. That is about as hard as I want to work technically in any situation. That doesn't make me less good than anyone who can do incredible technical stuff. That means that I'm just doing what I can do and you are never matched against anyone else because you do your version of you. You, you only you can be the best version of you. So ride that wave, start small, no one else's pace, your pace, I'm excited about it. And you'll be brilliant. And if you're not, then great, you've learned, you've made your own choice and you can do something else and approach everything like that, one tiny step at a time for you. Is that That's, it? That's amazing, yeah. Wow, you're just a fountain of knowledge. Um, you really are. are you planning on doing more lectures, Simon? Is that something that you'd like to do more of? A couple of people have asked, and I think maybe, I, I just always get scared that no one really wants to hear about acting and the technique of performance and creativity and stuff, because we just want to learn tricks, right? Most people do just want to learn tricks, and that's fair enough. But I think okay, maybe- How about you cheat them? How about you teach them some tricks? Yes. Illustrate a point. So the learning magic and they're actually learning something by shadow, you know, by stealth. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I probably will. And you know what? Once once I have the stuff out with Penguin, then I've got bits and bobs that I can lecture on and stuff. I don't want to lecture other people's material. I want to I, I, I want to I want to come up with my own bits and handlings and things and stuff. So, yeah, I probably would once I've once I've got some bits that I, I, I feel like less of a that I'd be less boring to the to the Buxton Magic Society. <laughs> I, I'm here to tell you about the construct of building a scene within the realms of magic. Boo! Go away! <laughs> Show us the tricks! <laughs> Please tell me that you're doing a Penguin Live when you're over there. No! 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 Not yet. I, I personally will ring Sean Dunn and make tell him that he's got to make you do a penguin live, man. Not yet. Penguin not yet. Penguin. I wouldn't say I have enough. That, that I, I wouldn't want to just do a dealer den penguin live. I don't mind it, but I, it just wouldn't float my boat. And I, I haven't got enough original handlings of things to to teach yet. But I'll get there. I'll get mm -hmm. there. I'll get there. Yeah, you there's, will. Um, yeah. There's some there's some really fun stuff that I'm working on that I'm really excited about. That I'll tell you once we've stopped recording. Sounds, um, sounds, now I'm excited. Yes. But yeah, stuff like that. Then once we're there and I can teach people how to, I'm a bit of a, I like making, weird, I'm terrible at making stuff, but I like making stuff. 
I, 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 I like, I'm trying to look around and see if I've got, can I run off camera for a second? Go for it. Go for it. Yeah. I'll just, uh, I'll just sit here and admire your ace of hearts on the wall. It's got a swear word on it. Don't let them see. Oh, don't worry. This is my channel. The worst, there's worse than that. Uh, okay. I'm currently trying to read the books in your magic in your library. Yeah, you can look at the magic books. Okay. Right. Yeah, I like this. Is some of the stuff that I built. This can't have noise in it, but <laughs> drink multiplying cans of coke. Hey, that's really great. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll, I'll show you the methods on all of it. I just cut, cut, just cut a can up. That's this. <laughs> that's, but this is the kind of nonsense that you that you can. <laughs> You can look so good. You can build this. I can't do this. The angles on this are going to be terrible. Uh, maybe here, change to red, change to blue, give it a shake, change to black, change to brown, change to yellow. <laughs> That's fooled the crap out of me. Okay, so it's a double sided pencil with LX tape <laughs> that I shaved to be on a triangle axis so that your fingers can sit so here and so your fingers can naturally feel the groove of where it goes so that looks great. Bad, bad flash bad flash it's a camera trick but yeah so you can that looks really good yeah it's not bad um and then it's this is what i'm talking about this is about to snap this is what I'm talking about in terms of taking something. So I took Shin Nim's Gone Deck, which is a magic trick, but I thought well, it would be more fun with cereal. So. <laughs> That's amazing. It took me so long to build it. It's so pointless. <laughs> really cool though. Yeah, but, but the creativity, this is what I mean, like just stuff, nonsense. Absolute nonsense. But you can tell that you have fun building the stuff and coming so up with the stuff. And... I love it so much, and I'm rubbish at it. Uh, but like, it, it's literally hack jobs. But I would, I, if I, if anyone has got this far in this interview, go and buy something from Sainsbury's and send it to me or send it to Craig. Right? Here's the challenge, and I would genuinely love if you could do this. So like this, right? This was literally just thinking like, okay, well, how do I multiply? I'll just cut it up and cut a little slit down the back, right? Go and buy anything. Go to the store, nothing fancy. Go to Sainsbury's, go to wherever. Buy something and make a trick. It doesn't matter how rubbish it is. Just make, make a trick. Make a trick. I made straws. If you cut straw in half, you can do color changing straws from side to side just by rolling them in your fingers, the, spur, the, the swirly ones. You can make shells halfway down so you can do half what, like you can make shells out of straws. You can do anything. Find an old magic book with a weird principle and add it to something new. You don't spend more than 10 quid on it, but I promise you the feeling, if you can do it, the feeling that you'll have of, I made a thing, will be amazing. And send it to one of us and, and just let us see it or post it and tag us it, do something. But that was my challenge. Go and just make anything that you can call yours if you've never done it before unless like roddy mcgee's watching this in which case like get off your high horse prick <laughs> <laughs> i've never met you i've never met him i don't know him. He, no roddy is so annoying because he's another one of those people that can literally just take nothing and come up with the greatest gimmick of all time you know you just he he, he just has that ability and I've been lucky enough to see some of the stuff that Roddy's coming out with in the coming weeks and months, and it'll just blow your mind. Amazing. Amazing. He's, he's very, very good. So what's next? Final question. What's yeah. next? Because without being funny, yeah. you've had an incredible career as an actor. I'm not in the acting profession at all. However, I've got friends that are actors, and uh, you, you've, 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 you've been performing at a very high level for a very long time. You know, there's some people that would dream to even just set foot on a, on a West End stage one time. And you're just like, yeah, in December, I'm back in the West End again, you know, uh, uh, on top of all the film and the TV that you've done and everything. I mean, your career as an actor is incredible. Um, but you've been in magic for a very, been back in magic for a very short period of time. And let's be honest, in that very short period of time, you released tricks already with Preston. You've got the biggest magic company in the world to want to take four of your products off you. You've lectured at Blackpool. You're on the council of the magic circle. I mean, what the hell? 
Like, I mean, talk about over uh, overachieving and then some. Like, is there anything left in your bucket list, both from an acting point of view and also from a magic point of view that you want to do? Is there any, what, what, what's next? Because I also have got to know you well enough to know that you're very ambitious as well. And you're not just yeah. going to be sitting around in your pajamas, just like taking a break. So no. what's next? I know you want to be in a Marvel film. I want to be in a Marvel uh, film. We've, um, yeah, we've worked that out. But beyond that, what, what else? You know what? I would love to, I love, the, the creativity spans both things. So um, what I would love to do is write a comedy show for television, mm -hmm. uh, which I am working on. Um, so I would love to have my own TV show that I've written. Uh, uh, and, and made for TV and in magic it really is my happy place so as long as it's there then I'm happy but deep deep down I want to I love giving I'm a much better giver than I am this is no I'm going to backtrack this before we go uh I'm I I really like uh helping other people maybe who maybe think they can't achieve something um because they, everyone can because everyone's brilliant so I love, I would love to direct in magic more. I would love to help people realize that they can achieve stuff that they never thought they could do and be brilliant versions of themselves and create brilliant things. And maybe somewhere down the line, I'd love to create a live stage show for magic, for the, for the mass, for people, for everyone that wasn't a gang show. I think that we maybe have done with the bit that is just, here's a bunch of magicians on stage doing tricks. I would love to create a play, something that use magic as a medium to tell a story like dance is used, opera is used, singing in musicals is used, movement and mime is used, but magic is never used to tell the story as its own medium, but it's so powerful and so creative. So I would love to be able to create a piece of stage theater on a very large scale. That is a story that is told through the medium of magic. Wow. That would be incredible. To advance how people see magic in a theatre. That would, yeah. You are right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a very good point. I've never thought about it like that before, but you're right. You know, it's, it, it's always presented as, here's some guys doing tricks. Here's some guys doing tricks. We'll watch, we'll watch a whole story. We'll watch whatever. Edward Scissorhands through the medium of dance and people will rave about it and go and pack that theatre out every night for two months. But why couldn't we watch Alice in Wonderland through the medium of magic? No so I think I'd like to start a company that that did that. Wow, that's that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Like I said, you're very ambitious, and it's amazing. It really is. Um, uh, likewise, I, I have one other question. Okay, popped into my head. It's slightly more personal, so I hope you don't mind. Okay. Um, I, I heard you say earlier on, "Hey, you know my missus." So I'm guessing yeah. that you're in a relationship. Yeah. One question that I personally get all the time, because I'm really busy and I, people see me doing this and that and the other. And one, one thing that people ask me is time management. Yes. Um, and, and, and there are magicians that have decided to hang up their magic wand, for one better for word, since COVID, because COVID allowed them to spend more time with their family. Yeah. And they realized that they didn't want to go back to working every weekend and every evening and they wanted to actually see their family. Yeah. Um, as somebody who literally travels around all over the place you're going to bristol you might have to go away for weeks on shoots you're all over the place not just gigging but also as an actor mm. it's even worse than a magician you know a magician we might have a, a a gig that we spend a day going to and a day coming back was acting you might be away for a while mm. how do you balance work and family time because this is a question i get on the channel a lot and yeah into my head i think it'd be a good question to ask i mean i just got lucky man i got she's amazing she like she's independent she's a wonderful woman she like has she has never once said oh come on like she's never done it like it's mm -hmm. she's she's brilliant but i also try and make as much time for us as possible when i do have time and make it count and you know she's also a brilliant working professional so there's times where i'm like i'm bored i've not got anything to do and she's like off i'm working so like you know this is that it's just Honesty, openness, if you're in it together and you're always transparent and you're just a, are a team, then it will work, I guess. That's great. But yeah, I'm very lucky. Plus, there's a dog as well. 
So well, there you go. I mean, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah, you've got a rile and I've got a dog. Like, yeah, so, yeah. yeah they, they probably both make a mess yeah. <laughs> everywhere yeah, for as well. Sure, for sure. For sure. <laughs> that's awesome. Simon, this has been incredible. So if people okay. want to reach out to you. Um, okay. where, where, where can they do so? Like, if people want to, like, follow you, what social media is best to follow you? Just, if you want to find out more about your career, both as an actor and as a, uh, as a, as a magician, where can people... Just, I guess if they want to follow me, I'm on Instagram at Simon Lipkin. That's it. Simple. That's yeah, it's simple. It's a shit surname, so there's no there's no other ones. <laughs> and if if people want some advice, they like something's really spoken to them on this interview, can they message you on Instagram? Yeah, give me a message. If I'm if I'm, I'm if I it takes me a little while to get back to you, it's because I'm on set and I'm filming and I'm going back and forth but if I'm there in the minute that I read them I'll I'll, I'll respond and if I can help in any way shape or form I'd be be more than happy to thank you mate that's amazing guys I want you to leave a comment down below in the uh, in, in the comments let Simon know what you thought I've loved this interview this has genuinely been one of my favorite interviews and honestly it's one of the only interviews on this channel that's completely transcended from an interview into a masterclass in oh. performing creativity and just being a better version of you. This has been exceptional. Thank you so much. And uh. whatever you carry on. Do and by the way, keep an eye on Penguin, uh, because when Simon's stuff comes out, it's going to be incredible. Ironically, I've just had a message from Sean Dunn as I've... Um, uh, as I've been speaking to you, so I'm going to I'm going to ring him back after this interview, and I'm going to tell him that Penguin needs to put everything on hold, and the second you go and film that, that's the first thing that they need to release. Right. So, <laughs> Simon, thank you so much. Thanks, mate. You're a gentleman, guys. Leave a comment down below, and I'll be back again soon. But Simon, one more time, thank you very much. That's another wait. That's another interview in the bag. <laughs> You got it. Look, if this whole acting thing doesn't work out, right? Yeah. And, and and it all dries up. You can come and do the review show with me because, to be honest, he's getting a bit too big for the show. Yeah, it, we, it, we, we both got darker. You won't notice the difference. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. That's amazing. I found a replacement for Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> See you, everyone. <laughs>